This morning, we are going to hear from um, Mr. John Eggs. Mr. John Eggs is a former CEO of several institutions and several systems of healthcare in Northern America. He will talk to us, to us about the very idea of implementing um, um, healthcare services and implementing a process of integration for services, for healthcare, advanced healthcare services. After Mr. John Eggs, we will have um, Dr. Richard Hart. Dr. Richard Hart will actually make a presentation for us on the experience of Adventist Health International, which is a larger body at the level of the um, con general conference that is supporting healthcare services. So how the general conference through AHI is helping our institutions. The third presentation we will have will be with Dr. Elianoe. Dr. Elianoe is the one that is, I mean, is the former president of Asia, is one of the person that is that had been instrumental to create this body. And he will talk to us about the governance model that we have in Inter America when it comes to healthcare institutions. After Dr. Onoe, Dr. Dwight will be coming to talk to us about at a quality assurance and patient safety. And to finish, we will finish, we will end up this, this period with Dr. Boeham that will talk to us about integration of our healthcare, of the mission of the church in our healthcare services. Um, so thank you for that. And help me to welcome Mr. John Higgs that will share with us the first presentation, Integrated Healthcare Services in Inter America. Good morning. Good morning for those of you that are here in Miami. Uh, fortunately, it's just a little bit cooler Miami than maybe what it's been. And uh, for those of you that are online, great to see uh, really a worldwide uh, participation. So as Dr. Frank just mentioned, I am John Hicks. While I have been a CEO of hospitals for more than 26 years, um, I was a graduate of Loma Melinda University's Masters of Health Administration course a few millennia ago. And uh, while I did work for a little while with uh, Adventist Health Systems in my early career, the vast majority of my career has been in non-Adventist hospitals. I spent some time in a Catholic organization, health system, and I spent some time in a very large, well-integrated uh, secular system, Intermountain Health. So we're gonna talk a little bit about integrated healthcare systems and integrated healthcare services and how that might benefit us and how we might think about and participate later in this uh, symposium in giving thoughts and advice about what are future steps for us to take. To kind of begin with, um, at least in the United States, uh, integrated healthcare systems, health systems, uh, really got their bigger start about 25 years ago. Prior to that, 80 to 85% of all urban hospitals in the U.S. were independent, standalone facilities. And that has changed to now, you would be hard-pressed to find very many independent, freestanding hospitals in urban areas that are not part of a large health system and is not taking advantage of some form of an integrated healthcare system. I've been in both places. For some time in my career, I ran a independent standalone hospital in the Denver Front Range, Colorado market. That's about a seven or eight million uh, people market. Um, I was one of two independent hospitals uh, for many years. Through this journey, I will talk about here in just a minute, we then merged ourselves um, because we were one of few, the few independent hospitals left. Uh, we merged ourselves into and we chose a Catholic system. And I'll talk a little bit about that. 
And then we then then as a Catholic system, we merged into Intermountain Health. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that journey and why, um, because it, it relates back to an integrated healthcare story and a journey. So let's just talk a little bit about uh, integrated healthcare systems and health systems. And if you've talked to very many people about this, you will soon find that there is a spectrum of, of, of integration levels amongst systems. And I'm gonna start uh, more on that right side, um, the integrated light side of that uh, spectrum. Um, and this is commonly referred to as holding company models um, these are organizations that are still separate organizations that come together with shared mission, vision, and values. Um, does that sound familiar? You just heard from Lowell, where that is, in fact, uh, really uh, the hospitals that we have within the IAD in ASHIA are, are exactly that. And then you have an integration model that goes all the way over to what we might call a highly integrated organization or an operating model where in fact, um, while the institution's buildings may look unique to where they're located, they operate pretty much as one organization throughout all of their locations. Think, think of it as like a, a Marriott or a Hilton. You can find those organizations all over the world um, they may look a little bit different, but you know that when you walk in, the registration is going to be the same. You know what the look and feel is going to be like. You, you know that it's going to have consistency in what to expect. And that's because they have highly integrated their operational structures throughout the entire spectrum of their locations and their operations. The IAD, the ASHIA, what they are talking about doing is talking about moving us as a system of hospitals, as a collection of individual hospitals, um, which we could say we are right now in a form of integrated hospital system, a little bit further along the integration scale in order to take advantage of of uh, the economies of scale, the benefits that you can get from a larger organization. I'm gonna pause with there for a moment because remember that as we just heard from Lowell, when you think about the Seventh-day Adventist church, it is a integrated faith-based church system. It's a worldwide faith-based church system now. It's highly integrated. The messages that you see and feel in the United States will be very similar with cultural overtones wherever else you go. It's already a very much of an integrated thing. However, as we also heard, our hospitals operate very differently while, while together we operate still in a very different structure than the church does. So we can take advantage of some economies of scale, some um, pooled resources from the church. You already see that in terms of Adventist risk management. You take the property and you put it all together and you get more advantages, lower cost. So, IAD is not looking to change your governance structure. They're not change, looking to change your, your culture. They're not looking to change your management. But they are suggesting ways in which we can start using more of size to the advantage. You, you're on your markets, just like I was when I was at an independent hospital, um, looking for ways to have more advantages in how I competed. And we already know that larger institutions, larger healthcare services, not just bring uh, more uh, cost advantages, but they help bring more specialties. So collaboration and coordination 
is really what's being talked about here. Not a heavy command and control type of a model, but yet trying to create better care through better systems and better processes for better community health. So the benefits of having an integrated healthcare system um, really helps to energize and synergize uh, the resources that we have in our various hospitals. Um, you know, I noted earlier that uh, I was the CEO for a long time of a standalone independent hospital. And uh, while we not only survived, we thrived really as, as an independent hospital, one of two um, in the entire front range of Colorado. And uh, we took every advantage of, of being um, quick, nimble, able to meet the needs of our local physicians, our local providers, uh, our community. We did very well at being independent. Um, but then we started to realize, I started to realize that it wasn't the goal of our institution just to be independent and just to make money. Our goal was to make a difference in our community. And as a result, what we needed to do is, uh, in order to expand that impact on our community, we needed to have what bigger institutions and health systems could bring. And that was um, the ability to uh, compete at a higher level than what our resource level would have to do. Now, we ended up joining into a Catholic system. Um, yes, you heard me. A secular hospital joined in with a Catholic, small Catholic entity. We remained uh, secular. Um, but I got to tell you, this was in my middle part of my career. And I really enjoyed the fact that with the Sisters of Charity of Leavenworth, it's a small Catholic entity um, that happens to be double A rated, happens to be very good. While there's a lot of Catholic health systems that are out there, they're not all that good, um, but a number of them are very good. In this one, the sisters, the nuns, were still directly involved. And I got to tell you that that was a real advantage. Um, the sisters really kept us focused on what we were there for and why we're there for. Now, you know, they, they weren't there to run the hospitals and stuff. In fact, that's why I and others were there. Um, but they made a huge difference. And I can remember this one sister. Um, she liked to use an example, an example of uh, it's a boxing example. Um, now, our, for our church leaders, I, I'm not a big fighting fan. Um, and I don't think the sister was a big fighting fan, you know, but she used to talk about how, and, you know, and uh, the sister, my sister, her stature was really quite small. If she was 100 pounds, that, that, that was when she was wet. And she used to talk about, you know, how she would really need to be able to punch at a higher weight class. Um, because boxing as a sport, is uh, divided into weight classes, everything from lightweight to heavyweight. And that's because your bigger boxers have more length in their punching uh, strikes, uh, stronger. It would not be fair for them to compete with the lighter boxer. And so, but she used to say, listen, we've got to be able to compete and we've got to find a way to, to punch at a higher level. All right, so I'm not going to, continue to use the boxing terminology, um, but we really do, and I needed to, when I was at the independent hospital, figure out how we could find force multipliers. I'll, I'll call it that, the competitive advantage force multiplier. Um, and in finding force multipliers, when we merged with our uh, sisters, and we started uh, going through an integration process of our healthcare services and finding ways to create and develop force multipliers. Um, 
it made a very big difference. Let me just give you a few examples. Um, supply cost. When you're a large organization, you can simply buy supplies at a, at a lower cost. We all know that. We reduced our supply cost across the board by 5%. We reduced our capital cost by 8% across the board. Um, we increased the number of specialists, the kinds of specialists that we had. Um, we, ha we adopted and implemented a much better health information system. Um, all of those are just a few examples of having force multipliers that really help you get started. So you already know that as an Inter-America uh, system of hospitals, you've already got a start to that. Um, you've got that integrated church structure. Um, you do a little bit with size and scale now, but remember that hospitals are very different. Um, the church has a large amount of labor in, in terms of what it deals with and labor cost. Um, yes, it does have some property, um, but on the hospital side, we have P, P and E, property, plant and equipment that makes up at least 50% of our total cost. And uh, so as a result, you need different mechanisms in order to create uh, those, um, those force multipliers. When we think about uh, where the IAD is at right now and ASHIA, um, what they're talking about is saying, how do we right now as a collection of individual hospitals go out and find and develop through collaboration and cooperation, not through command and control, the idea of taking advantage of size and scale. And you can absolutely do that uh, and do that easily. And so what they've done here is they've gone out and brought in coaches and guides to help with that journey that's ahead. So you're gonna hear a little bit about quality and how you can make a difference. And, and they brought in an expert um, who is in fact working with all of our uh, hospitals from around the world, uh, Dwight, and he's excellent. And he's gonna talk a little bit about and help the institutions. He's in, he is in fact at the institution I'm a board member of at Antillian Adventist Hospital. Um, and he's gonna make a big difference with that. We're gonna talk a little bit about fundraising, um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about what are our ideas that we can do uh, as a group of hospitals and the IAD to make a difference in these economies of scale. Personally, I would like to work with you folks on seeing what we could do with supply chain and purchasing and purchasing power. Um, not because it's going to be easy. In fact, it's going to be one of the harder ones and not because it's going to be quick because it's not, it's going to take a while. Um, but as I look at it, there are several key advantages that we have working for us. Just up the road in Orlando is Advent Health. That's their headquarters. Advent Health, by the way, a very good uh, health system. Uh, double A rated um, with over 80 to almost 90 hospitals um, wields very good purchasing power. Their national contracts, which have been developed over the last 25 to 20 years, um, was developed actually by a lady by the name of Celeste West, an executive who recently retired just like me. And when I talked to her, she said, you know, John, I would be willing to work with the IAD and ASHA in seeing what we could do to take the purchasing power, because we already know that we can legally extend the purchasing power of the headquarters of, of Avent Health in Orlando to the IAD whose headquarters and church structure uh, uh, incorporation is here in Miami, in Florida, 
and we can extend those legally to there. And then we already know that IED is an umbrella organization um, for, what's, for what's there. And so I wanna take a look and see what can be there. Now, having just said that, you gotta realize that it's 16 hospitals in 13 countries. This isn't, this isn't 80 hospitals in, in a whole bunch of states. 80 hospitals in a bunch of states would be a lot easier. Um, so there's challenges to be had for sure that are there. But just take a look at all of these thoughts that are on, on the board. I mean, folks, there are a lot of things that we can do to energize and synergize exactly where we're at and what we want to do in our communities. One of the things that I found, I, I already mentioned my, my sisters, I really enjoyed my time in that faith-based organization um, because having uh, the sisters directly involved really did make a difference. Um, and uh, it, it's actually why I'm here today. While I started early in my career in the Adventist Health System in a faith-based, mission-based uh, approach, and then again uh, with the Catholics who, who, who adopt the healing ministry of Christ as well, um, but there is, folks, a definite advantage to being a faith-based hospital in your market. Most of the time, I was competing against you. Most of the time, I competed against my Adventist hospitals in whatever market I was in, and, and they were good organizations, and we were a good organization. But I don't know why, but not all faith-based hospital organizations realize that they hold a competitive advantage. And having that background, and I saw it, I, I'm not quite sure why they all didn't see it. Um, and yes, I went on to be an inner uh, mountain healthcare. Um, it's like Kaiser Permanente, it's a very large um, and dominates the whole part of the middle part of the United States uh, mountain regions. Um, it, in fact, has its own insurance company, um, it is fully integrated. Uh, it has every cost advantage. It is, it is a fine run organization. But his leadership isn't always as focused on the mission and the output of what we're there to do. And so I'm just here to tell you that it's an advantage. It's why I said I was going to volunteer for AHI uh, when I retired, what, about a year, just over a year ago now. Um, so let's do this. Let's start thinking about how we can collaborate, communicate, and, uh, and do more together to find force multipliers and make a bigger difference in the communities that we serve now. Because remember, we're here to open the door. You just heard as a mission, we're here to open the door to a message that the world needs to hear. And that is a crisis coming back. And so the way we do that is making a huge difference in our communities. We open that door wide and people are going to ask, wow, tell us more about who you are. I found as a Adventist CEO, in secular, in Catholic, and other large healthcare organizations, they all knew I was a Seventh-day Adventist. And they even asked me personally, tell me more about what you believe and why, why are you in a Catholic organization? You know, um, at any rate, we can all make a difference. I look forward to working with you and the ideas that you come up with later in, in, in this uh, session.